Welcome to LOA Today. Walt Thiessen and Life Coach Tom Wells here. Today is Friday. Happy Friday, everybody. Friday, December 22nd, 2017. Just three days away from Christmas. Two shopping days left, so if you haven't done the shopping, you better get it done. Not much time left. Santa's going to be mad. <laughs> But, uh, Tom, it's been an amazing week. I hope you've had an amazing week, too. Yeah, I had a really good week. I made a lot of progress and looking forward to the weekend, but looking forward to our show today. Yeah, me too. You came up with a, a good topic because um, I've been paying attention to some of the Law of Attraction groups on Facebook the last few days. And what you came up with, boy, that really is the message that all the questioners need to hear because they all bring up things about how... You know, they're, oh, they're trying to attract a mate or they're trying to lose weight or they're trying to get the income. And then they, they focus on all the reasons why that isn't happening and all the ways it's frustrating to them and so forth, which is understandable when you raise an issue like that. That's what you do. But they don't spend any time focusing on the positive stuff, on, on what it's going to take to make it work, on, you know, what, the, what steps they're taking to make it work and so forth. And so your topic is perfect. I'm going to let you introduce the topic, but I think your topic is perfect. Yeah, the topic is about focusing on positive aspects, and um, the thing that I wanted to start out with is how to create what is called by Abraham in their book, um, Ask and It Is Given, a book of positive aspects, and I call also call it an appreciation journal, and it's something I use um, not every day, but just about every day because I have found it to be so effective for me that in any kind of consciousness that I'm in, any state of mind I'm in, if I go pick up this appreciation journal and I start writing about things I appreciate, uh, it'll it'll turn me around. It'll turn my state of mind around. And so I wanted to explain to folks how you create one of these, and um, the, and then we can discuss the value of it, how this idea of focusing on positive aspects in our life makes such a difference. So there's an actual art form to creating this thing. It's not like you just get on a piece of paper and start writing. Yeah, well, I, it, it can make it, I think, for me, more of a solid um, reality when I actually – here's the idea. You, you go to you know an office supply store somewhere. If, if you like writing in longhand, and you could do this on your computer as well, but I like – I'm old school, so I like the idea of having a, a, a really nice notebook – that lays flat on a table, um, you know, so I get a, I get actually a big spiral notebook that um, has plenty of room for writing, and, I, and on the outside I wrote, you know, book of positive aspects or appreciation journal, and then what you do is you, you use this when you're um, either riding a wave of, of positive good feeling emotions and good feeling thoughts you've been having, or when You've, you've been dealing with a subject, say relationships or money or your career, that you, things are not feeling good and you want to improve your vibration about that particular area, that particular topic. Or you can use it when you have been having quite a few things working well in your life, but there's a few areas where you just need to mold those areas into better feelings, better feelings within yourself. So you, you purchase this notebook and, and you, you lay it down on a table, you, you know, put it on a, on your lap and you, and you set aside 20 minutes and, um, at the top of, of the first page, just write one, one suggestion from Abraham is write a name or brief description of someone or something that you generally always feel good about. For example, maybe, um, your spouse. <laughs> Maybe, um, maybe <laughs> you want to write about a favorite musician or a favorite uh, place you go in nature, or even a favorite restaurant you love going to, or something um, you know, like your pet. You know, <laughs> something you just have generally good feelings about. And then um, you you write that name at the top of the first page, and then you answer these three questions. You say, "What do I like about you?" What do I love? Why do I love you so much? And what are your positive aspects? And sometimes I might just ask one overall question, what do I appreciate about you or about this thing that I want to write about? And then just write whatever comes to you. 
So whatever comes in terms of your appreciation, what you like, what you love, what's the positive things about this person, about this place, about this thing, what do you appreciate about it? And just gently and easy, easily, without making this a a labor, make it make it a a fun thing. And you just start writing on each line something you appreciate. And you do that for 20 minutes, and if you fill up a page in 10 minutes, you start another page, write either about the same thing or if you still want to say more positive things about that or start a new page. Think of some something else you feel positive about most of the time and start writing those aspects. And so the whole idea is just to do that on a consistent basis. And the idea is that if you do that at a consistent basis, you will activate within yourself a higher vibration of well-being, and you'll get to where you feel really good. Uh, that's what I found it does for me so much, is just by, as I start writing all these things that I appreciate, either about something or just about the day, I might just be saying, what do I appreciate? It's, you know, it's 8 a.m., what am I appreciating right now in my life? And by the time I finish that page, I'm ready to go. I feel like my day is amped up. And I just feel good inside because I reminded myself about all these wonderful things that I feel good about. That's fantastic. But you've got something that, that really amps you, that, that makes you feel good, and, and it makes you want to keep doing it over and over again because that makes it easier to keep a, a habit like that going. So that's that's really terrific. Um, you mentioned that you do it in longhand. Is there a particular reason you do it in longhand? You know, there is, and that's funny that you ask, because <laughs> that goes back to my days of working with this shaman I worked with in New Mexico, who was a Pueblo Indian, and uh, he was also a shaman in Guatemala. And he he said that, you know, he's, he's an author, but he believes that when you write in longhand, you engage all kinds of different aspects of yourself that you don't get the same thing from a keyboard. And people could argue that today because so many people are only using a keyboard or some people are only dictating, you know, through a an audio means into their computer. But I really like writing, and that's probably because I grew up with so much writing. It feels really good to me. And it, But I do believe it might involve more of our whole being when we use our hand, you know, because people use their hands um, to make beautiful things for so long. So when you write, you're making something of beauty just in the writing. So that's a long answer to a short question. <laughs> no, that's a good answer. In fact, um, I, I also had a reason for raising the question, which is I saw a study uh -huh. about this, a study about um, the differences between entering stuff by typing it and entering it by writing it. Now, this particular study was about college students, and it was about how well they're able to absorb material based on what kind of note-taking do they do. Do they take notes in handwriting, or do they type their notes? And according to the study, mm -hmm. the likelihood of the student performing well, getting the A's or B's or whatever, is much, much higher when they do longhand handwriting than when they type up the notes, even when they type up the notes verbatim as they're coming out of the, of the uh, instructor's mouth. And, Interesting. Yeah, so it, it kind of reinforces what you're saying. Now, there's also another piece to this, which I found really interesting, because I, I had to admit mm -hmm. I was a little skeptical Partly because I'm a typer. My hand, Tom, if mm -hmm. you saw my handwriting, you wouldn't be able to read it. I, I write worse than most mm -hmm. doctors. It's just terrible. Mm -hmm. I can't even read it. I mean, seriously, I can't even read my own writing sometimes. It's terrible. Oh, that happens to me too. Oh, yeah. it's like, you know, what, what on earth was I thinking when I wrote that? I mean, it's like it's, it's like this blur, you know, like this long line. It's just a, it's just a straight line. It doesn't have any curls in it or anything. It's just oh, it's uh, awesome. and you can't you can't tell what it says. No, at all. it's just it's completely illegible. But so that's why I was a little defensive about it. I want to, you know, I want to find out well if there any value to actually doing the typing. So I investigated the study further. I started reading the details. It didn't limit myself to just the abstract. And I found uh -huh. that what they were really discovering was that the difference between the longhand handwriters and the typists is that the longhand handwriters had their minds engaged. It's very easy to be mm. just a, a typist who's just typing up what somebody else is saying, like a, a transcriptionist. You don't even have to think about mm -hmm. it. All you have to do is just put the words down. You don't have to engage uh -huh. in those words at all. And, mm. then, and when I heard that, I realized, oh, well, that makes some sense to me because now I can see how I can be a typist and still have it be effective because when I'm typing, I'm really engaged in what I'm typing. Of course, I'm, I'm typing as a, more like a creative writer than a note taker. 
but I'm yeah. t- I'm taking the time to think through what is it I'm trying to say and figure out how to express it and where's the feeling attached to it and all that kind of thing. So I'm pretty sure I'm oh, getting the great. benefit that a longhand writer would get. But I can see if you're just typing for the sake of typing to get the words out, it's not going to do a whole lot of benefit for you. Wow. Yeah. You know that's funny because uh, that you you just brought up in my mind how how influential it was for changing my entire focus of my life was changed about four years ago when I really got heavily into Abraham and I um and I would listen to these segments on YouTube or other sources that I was receiving these audio segments and I decided that when I heard some that were so powerful I decided to write them out in longhand the entire segment. So if it's 15 minutes long or 10 minutes long, I'd write the whole thing out. And as I wrote each line, I could feel this stuff penetrating into my consciousness and me really getting it because, of course, the words that I was reading were so powerfully uh, addressing the stuff that I was wrestling with in my life, whether it was around money or it was around career or relationships or my health. You know, I had I had really serious issues in all those areas in my mind. And as I would write out these segments of all these answers to my questions, I would literally feel like I was changing my consciousness. And that's indeed what I did. You know, I have never been the same since that, that first year when I wrote out in longhand all these different Abraham segments that were, they were impacting me so deeply. And and I never have looked back. They I was changed. I was transformed by doing that. What, and what along led you with to doing do that? this kind of work too. What what led you to, to write those out though? I mean, was it something that Abraham said? What did they suggest write these out? I mean what what made you decide? No, to do no, that? they never said that. I, I just I think I knew it about the way I learn. I think I realized that if I would write this sentence by sentence, that it would internalize it for me. It would it would be like etching it into my consciousness which is exactly what it did, because as I would see it on the paper and then reread it, and sometimes I would take certain things and then go type those up and put the typed words near my bed or somewhere where in the morning I would read them again. And um, and it would just, it would be really, really powerful for me. Um, another thing I, I would do is I would take certain quotes that had a huge impact on me, and I would put that quote on an entire page of paper, and I would hanging up in my kitchen or in my office in front of me where I would see it during the day. And um, those those big, giant quotes would just really help me get through an entire day, you know, uh, like ones where they would say things, say about how all you need is appreciation. If you if you had nothing else in your life but just appreciation, you could you could achieve, you know, you could manifest everything you want for your life, you know, quotes like that. Um, That's interesting because I, I mean, so, yeah. you, you mentioned how you put them up or, or you reread them and so forth. I, I have a, it's not an Abraham quote; it's one I just made up myself. But I have something uh, taped on the wall, a piece of paper that says, "I am source energy, and, and I make wonderful things happen by feeling good first. It's kind of like a reminder uh-huh. of you know, well, yeah, I, it's a feeling universe. I want to get into the feeling mode so that I can you know exercise my power. So. Yeah, that's that's a powerful affirmation. So any yeah any affirmation like that is also powerful. I've done that also. Um, we, we could, we should probably do a whole show on just affirmations because that's a, <laughs> that's something that takes a little understanding, I think, to get the affirmations to where they're really solidly af- affecting us. But this writing in, in a book of positive aspects and appreciation journal is, um, is a way to focus again our, our focus on something positive and to teach ourselves to, no longer default to negative thinking and and one thing that abraham talks about in in the little section in their book asking it is given on creating the book of positive aspects is that you know how much our society has trained us to to, to predominantly focus on you know being being worried about things yeah. being concerned you know we they call it face reality you know <laughs> and uh you know, accept the facts that, uh, you know, there's a lot of things that aren't working well and there's a lot of things we should admit the fact that we've got big, big problems. And um, by by doing an appreciation journal, our book of positive aspects, what you're, what you're instead doing is you're not allowing those things into your mind during the time that you're writing. 
and instead on each line you're writing something you're digging in a sense you're mining they said they said you know we need to mine for positive aspects we can't just assume they're going to all the gold's going to be on the surface and we're going to always feel these positive aspects you've got to dig for them in a certain way let them flow out but but you know take the time to put our focus on the positive because when we're focused on the positive we there's not room in our mind for all the other negative messages. Oh, sure. It, it reminds me of a saying from the 1970s, reality, what a concept. And it really just, yeah, it, right. it, it illustrates beautifully that it, reality is just as malleable as anything else. I mean, you, you get to, to change your own reality anytime you want to, just a question of what you're going to focus on. So what are you going to focus on? And uh, the journaling thing is is a terrific way to focus on what you want to focus on rather than what everybody is saying. Oh, well, you have to focus on this. If you don't focus on this, your head's in the sand. Well, sometimes the sand is right. actually a better place to be. <laughs> right, right, right. Not because there's you're running away, fun. not because you're running away, but because there's not value in the thing that everybody wants you to look at. There's much more value in looking at other stuff. And the journaling is really good for that. We get the same benefit doing the podcast. I mean, we're doing it orally. Uh -huh. We're doing it through through sound and, and through talking. But it's the same thing. We have to be thinking about stuff as we're talking. When you and I are having a conversation or I'm doing it with, with, with one of the other co-hosts, we have to be really engaged in what we're doing. So it's it has the same kind of effect. I know it does because I always feel so good at the end of a podcast. Um, but the, the journaling is, is yet one other great tool that we can use. And and I have to admit, journaling is not something that I've done a lot of. I've done some of it. It never really did a a whole lot for me. Maybe I just didn't do it often enough. I'm not sure. I mean, how often do you do your journaling? I do it at least three to four days a week. Is And sometimes I just forget, you know, but I have another journal that I also write in that also, it's it's a journal that I talk about something as if it's already done. And so I only write in that journal the statements, um, the sentences as if something has already been completed. Uh, and that's called my Pray Rain Journal. Right, okay. Um, you talked which about we that. talked about on yeah. other shows. Right. But, you know, so therefore in that one I would write, you know, I have um, I have a full client load and I'm, you know, bringing in such and such an amount every month. It sure feels good to have to know that that my accounts are all completely f full of all the money I need for anything I want and need or, you know, I talk about, you know, my relationships as if they are the way that I want them to be and how it feels. You know, that's a journal for talking about all the good feelings I'm having. And that's something I also recommend to clients in the Appreciation Journal in the Book of Positive Aspects that they write, you know, they write a lot about feelings and that they and they consistently also dedicate a page to writing about the things that they love and appreciate about themselves because um, I know Abraham talks about that a lot, and I certainly believe it's 100% true in my coaching practice that you've got to have a high opinion of yourself and, and, and taking the time to, to focus on your own self-love and the things you appreciate about who you are is really a very powerful tool. You know, like if you're going into a relationship or you're in a relationship – I really believe I can only bring to that relationship the amount of love that I have for myself. And by writing out in my appreciation journal the things I really notice that I love about myself, it's, it really helps me to bring that to my other relationships. So when you're focusing on the emotional side of, of your writing, are you are you like telling stories? Are you just putting down random thoughts that are, are that have emotional content? What are you doing? Well, I'm writing something for example like um i appreciate how much i am willing to take care of my own um consciousness by rem remembering to write in my appreciation journal <laughs> or you know i so, appreciate so really that simple stuff, I, I appreciate that i take the you know i love the fact that i take the time every day to meditate um, I, I love the fact that I take care of my health by eating in a way that feels really good to me and keeps my health feeling really great. Um, I appreciate that I go out into nature three times a week and sit in my favorite spot. Um, you know, I appreciate that I love myself enough to not speak about things that I don't want to have come come true in my life, but rather I speak about things that I want in my life. 
So I, I praise myself and no, acknowledge myself for the things that I do that keep me on a steady course in my life, that keep me happy, that keep me feeling free, that keep me, you know, loving other people, that keep my house in order, that keep my life the way I want it to be, you know. Right. Just yeah. appreciation for myself on all kinds of different levels. By the way, for our listeners, um, if you're enjoying the show and if, you, if you're getting some good value out of this, and, you, and I'm sure you are because this is a terrific topic, something that really all of us need to at least try, and in many cases it'll actually, for many people, it's going to be something they love doing. Um, but if you're enjoying it, I just want to take a moment and ask you, share it. Share it on social media. Tell somebody, you know, just, just post it on your Facebook timeline or something. Uh, talk about how you're, you're listening to the show, listening to LOA Today, Tom Wells, Walt Easton, and they're talking about uh, uh, journaling on your positive aspects, and, and you just want other people to know about it. The reason we want you to do that, there are a couple of reasons. One is we want more and more people to be aware of the program, of the podcast, uh, especially now that we're doing it uh, twice daily, five days a week, plus Sunday. And we want to, to have more and more people benefit from that because this is your daily dose of happy. Uh, that's why we call it that. Your daily dose of happy is important, especially in the negative context of what, you know, all the negative stuff that's happening out there. We need stuff to counterbalance that. And people who are listening are listening more and more. I mean, Tom, I don't know if I told you, but uh, about three or four months ago, the average person who was visiting the site based on the statistics of the site um, were listening to about four, maybe five episodes. Now that number <laughs> is 16 episodes per person, and it's growing. So people are listening and wow. they're coming back and listening more and more. It, it shows it really does have value, mm. and people are finding it that it has value. So you know, take the time and share it on your social media because other people need to hear about this, and we want to build the numbers up uh, to give this you get this message out, that the various messages that appear on all of our, our our programs out to as many people as possible. I mean, literally, Tom, our goal for 2018, 1 million plays. Well, we got to get a bunch of listeners to do that, mm. and I think we can do it. Yeah, 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 you can do it. Absolutely. Definitely, that's great. Talk about exponential increase, right? I have to do some extra journaling to do it, but yeah, why not? It's worth it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm wondering, though, yeah. um, talking about the journaling, um, I, the reason I asked about storytelling is I wonder if you've tried actually writing out stories that have an emotional side to them of, you know, this is what happened to me today or this is what happened to me yesterday and and basically playing up the positive stories that occur in your own life. Because we all do have those stories. We just tend to forget about them. And journaling seems to me mm. to be a great way to actually, you know, rehash them and relive them and get the benefit out of them once again. That's a good idea, and I have done that when, um, for example, there's some exercises that I've done where you, you look back, let's say you're concerned about money, and you look back to a time when, say, you were making money in the past, assuming that you have one of those really good memories, and uh, and you write you write about it, you know, how great it was and all the good qualities of it, and then you, and then you say, and because I experienced that, I, and then you write a, a new story going forward, you know, like what you would like to experience based on that previous past story being so successful. And you can make up stories, too. You know, of course, oh, sure. according to everything I understand about how in the imagination and consciousness work, you know, you, you can make up a story about your past or about your future that is not true in terms terms of the facts of reality, but you make it true by writing it and by focusing on it and by enjoying it. And it's the good feelings you have when you write it that attract more good feelings and more good feelings and more good feelings. That's the same reason of doing the appreciation journal, the book of positive aspects. They get us into that vibration. And then the idea is you go into your day and you're going to be training your consciousness to attract more and more positive aspects into your life. You're training your mind to look at things that way instead of looking at, well, you know, the fact of the reality is we're in a drought and and I just have to look at that fact and admit it. You know, <laughs> yeah, we're right. we're screwed. Definitely don't <laughs> want to do that. That's not the place to be. But you're right. I mean, it's not like we have to spend all of our time trying to write about what we're trying to attract. In fact, it's probably better if we don't because you probably give up on journaling pretty quickly because you run out of things to say about what it is that you're trying to attract. But we can write about more mundane things. I mean, I, I can think of something, this happened actually a few years ago, 
but it was just a, a very, really pleasant mundane experience. Uh, my wife and I wow. were out on a nature trail in Virginia. We, this is when we were living in Virginia. And we were out on the trail, and there were a number of people out there. I mean, it wasn't hundreds. It was, you know, 20, 30 people in the immediate area within like a, a mile or so on this trail. And we get to this mm-hmm. one part where there's like a little walking bridge. It's not really a bridge. It's more like a an incline with, you know, like a dam, dam underneath or something like that. But we're walking on this little bridge over this this kind of a, I wouldn't, wouldn't even call it a wetland. It was just kind of like a little tiny mini valley. And all mm-hmm. of a sudden, th- these two deer emerged out of nowhere, racing like the wind. And they go yeah. running, jumping across that little bridge. They go leaping through the meadow. And, and within a few moments, you realize... They're playing. They're just playing chase. Let's just chase oh. each other. And they were chasing each other all around the landscape, all around us. And there's like four or five of us that are there, like watching entranced as these deer are just chasing wow. themselves all around ourselves. Like, whoa. That's, awesome. I mean, that's a great little story to write in your journal, you know? Um, but it yeah. can be something more mundane than that. I mean, I, very often, one of the things that I noticed a lot when we moved back to Connecticut from Virginia is that Virginia doesn't have chipmunks. Connecticut is loaded with chipmunks. I mean, you can hardly walk down a path without tripping over five of them. And and, <laughs> and, and you're walking along, and it's like a few of them. They're almost like kamikazes. Like you're going to put your foot down, and a chipmunk runs under it. It's like, oh, my God. Wow. Wow. <laughs> so, you know, I didn't know that. But you can write about stuff like that. You know, you can include that in your journal. Yeah. Like, I, oh, my goodness. I saw 17 chipmunks today. I can't believe I have never seen 17 chipmunks in my life. You can write stuff like that. And it has terrific yeah, emotional content. It has emotional positivity to it. It feels good. And it just reinforces a really nice little event that happened that day. That's great. Yeah. That reminds me of like when I get on Facebook sometimes and see these videos of these animals, you know, like a a deer playing with a dog or yeah. Oh, yeah. something like that. You know, a chipmunk playing with a rattlesnake. I <laughs> but, love the know, one. It's like, and how, how cool it is. And it makes me feel so good, you know, yeah. and I, I feel like that's so much what our culture needs, or I need anyway, is, uh, and my clients seem to need is, how do you get your mind off the heavy duty aspects of your life that bring you so much concern and worry and onto these things that are much more lighthearted, that feel a lot more fun and a lot more pleasant, and that bring us joy. You know, it's almost like I, I, I could form an entire school. It seems like that their the entire focus of the school would be just how do you learn to be joyful? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, I love the I don't know if you saw this one. You mentioned YouTube videos. I saw one where it was a crow that raised a kitten to a, oh, to a full grown wow. cat. I mean, he would feed the kitten. He would guard the kitten. He would play with the kitten. Have you ever seen a crow play with a cat? I, I was the most no, amazing thing I I've saw, ever seen. I saw a magpie play with a dog. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and then and it was, was really cute. That was another YouTube video, and and they had this incredible relationship. And the bird would fly down off its perch, and it would start goosing the dog, and the dog would, you know, get all lay on its back, and the bird would do all these fun things with the dog, and the dog would jump up and run in circles around it, and the bird would go after it again and start <laughs> playing with it. It was so cute. There was also one. It's a little bit. Uh, it's got a little bit of fear attached to it, but it's also got a lot of joy. There was a video of a little boy about, I'm going to guess, a year and a half, something like that. He was barely walking, barely getting around. He was outside, and a dog came out of nowhere and attacked him. Um, and wow. it, was, it was a pretty good sized dog, and within seconds of the attack, the family cat, who was about one fifth the size of the dog, Without hesitation, tore like a streak at the dog and attacked, claws flying all directions. And wow. the dog went, Wow! The wow. dog took off like a shot. <laughs> <laughs> the, the video of the, wow. uh, the family attack cat. I mean, I had never seen anything like that. <laughs> but basically, that cat yeah, was saying, You aren't touching my kid here. You're not going anywhere near him. <laughs> wow, wow. You know what I love about so many of those animal videos and things like that is that there, there's so many people are putting them up on Facebook and YouTube 
and they reflect the fact that there's a lot of really cool things going on in the world that I don't think we knew about before. Oh, some know? of them. You, you look at them and you say, I didn't know that was possible. <laughs> I exactly. Mean, I mean, there was exactly. the one about the, they, uh, the lioness who protected yet, the zebra. Did you see that one? The lioness who what? Protected the zebra. There was an injured zebra in Africa, <laughs> and the lioness protected him for like two or three wow. days. Finally, the, the male lions wow. got the zebra, but but for like two or three days, that lioness was determined that no one was going to get to him, that he was going to have a chance to heal and, and, and get up and go back and live his life. I mean, when did you ever hear of a lion protecting a zebra? <laughs> it's just unheard yeah, of. Yeah, 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 exactly. So, yeah, there's funny things that go on in the wild, and yet, and they're not always in the wild. They're domesticated animals all the time doing oh, yeah. these amazing things. Um, and yet, it's it's sort of like, it just reflects the fact what I get from all that stuff is over and over again, the message that tremendous amount of love underlies our existence. That, oh, yes. You know, there's just a lot of love in all of life. You know, everything from little creatures to big creatures, there's a tremendous amount of love. And it gives me reason to have more faith in life and in, you know, in everything to realize that, God, there's maybe the way life really works is based on love you know and in a way some people would say well duh of course it does and other people would say oh, that is so airy fairy what are you talking about man look at reality face reality <laughs> you know to, getting back to that one you know to which and, I reply you know, reality say, but I, I like I like to <laughs> sift and sort the realities I focus yeah. on yeah you know? I mean anybody who says you know get back to reality is somebody who's stuck in reality they have no idea how to get out of it and I feel sorry for them. Well, and, they, and like you say, they they call that reality. Yeah. You know, I mean, you could you could say that those YouTube videos are just as much reality as watching in a lion devour de, de, devour a a zebra. You know, and of course, what's wrong with the fact that lions eat zebras? There's nothing wrong with that. It's just that we've we attach you know negative values, negative associations with a lot of things. Um, it really points to the so fact that, that preference is really what it's all about. What do we prefer? Do we prefer yeah, exactly. do we prefer what's going on in quote reality unquote? Do we prefer that environment? Do we prefer all the negative stuff coming down the pike? Do we prefer all the the horrible unsolvable issues? Do we prefer all the really bad news that happens? Do we prefer to stay in the bluesy unhappy state where the girlfriend always leaves? Do we prefer all these things or do we prefer something else? You know, when somebody says you're not facing reality, I'm saying you're the one who's stuck on one side, and it's the side you don't like. Why do you keep Uh doing that? I mean, do you really hate yourself that much? (laughs) Why don't you just change your focus to something else? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, isn't it like just an old, old habit of believing that if we focus on the negative thing, we are doing our duty as human beings and must be some kind of belief in there that that'll help if we focus on the negative thing where somehow we don't have a choice, you know? It's like the 12-step um, group definition of what insanity is. Do you know that one? <laughs> the what? The, the 12-step? Yeah, 12-step groups, you know, Alcoholics Anonymous and, and all those kinds of things. They, they have a, a definition for the word insanity. Their definition is insanity is where you repeat the same activity over and over again, expecting a different result. Right, exactly. I heard that came from Einstein, but I don't know. But he but, might have um, said it too. I don't know. I know, I know it's popular in twelve step groups. That's where I know it from. But you know, it's, it's mm-hmm. possible. I can see Einstein saying that. That would make sense. There's a little um, a little paragraph I'd like to read from um, Abraham, and it it says, um, if someone says to you, you should face reality. You could answer back, I do, I do, I do it all the time. I've just become a more selective sister of the reality that oh, I face. Oh, that's nice. I like that. Be- because I blend, I begin to discover that whatever reality I'm facing, whatever re- reality I'm talking about or thinking about or remembering or repeating, whatever reality I'm making statistics of, whatever reality I'm holding for very long in my vibration becomes my own reality. And I become particular about the realities that I replicate in my experience because I've discovered that I can create reality. I can create reality. I create reality and I can choose the reality that I'm creating. 
So I basically, like you can you you can create the reality of anything you give your attention to. I like that phrase, a sifter of reality. A sifter of reality. Yeah. In other words, you are not enslaved to whatever it is you happen to see. You can actually choose what you're going to see. You can choose what you're going to focus on. You can choose what you're going to give your energy to. You don't have to pay attention to something just because somebody else is panicking about it. Right. Right. And sometimes, you know, if you really look at it through law of attraction, if you're focusing on the stuff that gives you panic and gives you worry and gives you fear, you're going to get more of the same. Hello. Yeah. That's the law of attraction. Exactly. Like <laughs> and attracts And if you do life. the opposite... If you do the opposite and you focus on your hope for things, your belief that things can work out, your your desire to have things work out, your noticing where things are working, that's the idea of the Appreciation Journal, the Book of Positive Aspects. You're noticing all the things that are working. You're noticing what you love about your dog. You're noticing what you love about your wife or your husband, you know. You're writing those things on that page instead of all those aggravations that you feel about your wife or your husband. I recommend this to clients all the time when they're going through something with their spouse is that they write out, they get a book of positive aspects and write the positive aspects of this other person. I was going to see my son one time and um, we had been on the outs for quite a while. I, I don't know if I told this story on the podcast before. You can no, I don't think so. Remind me if I, well, we had been on the outs for a while, like for six months, he hadn't been talking with me because he saw that. I wasn't freaked out about the election. I was no. <laughs> I was unwilling to get really intense about Bernie Sanders getting elected instead of uh, Hillary or instead of Donald Trump. You know, I was I wasn't I wasn't freaked out about it. And he was he, to him it was a life or death thing. You know, mm. it's like if if Bernie doesn't get elected, you know, I'm leaving the country kind of vibe. You know, right? The world and, ends. And, yeah, everything's going to go to hell in a handbasket, which he thinks it is anyway. But <laughs> uh, he did at that. He did at the time. Um, and so I was finally arranged where I could have dinner with him. And because he wasn't answering any of my texts, any of my emails, any of my phone calls, he wasn't responding. And I knew he was mad at me because he thought I had my head in the sand. And so on the way down to have dinner with him, I thought I was feeling so much emotional angst about it that I thought, how how can I go just see him, it's just going to turn into an ugly political battle or something, you know, but of mm -hmm. course I wasn't willing to battle, but sure. I didn't want him have, you know, him getting again to a place where he felt he had to uh, walk away from me or not talk with me because right. he'd agreed to have dinner. So I stopped on the way down there. I had extra time because I had to drive through rush hour traffic. I got down there early. I went to a coffee shop, got a cup of tea or something, and I sat there with my appreciation journal, believe it or not, I carried it with me, and I wrote down all the things about him that I love, that I love, that I appreciate, you know, the nice. fact that he's got a great sense of humor, the fact that he usually um, always, he and I get along well, um, the fact that he's a very kind human being, um, all these different things that I could think about my he's my stepson you know that i could think about him he's like he was like 20 27 years old and um i stayed there for half an hour doing that and by the time i left that coffee shop i felt i'm walking into his house with nothing but positive vibes about him and and i did exactly that walked in he said he said let's go and we took off the entire evening there was not a single mention about anything that had come up in the past wow. and we laughed we had fun. We went out afterwards for ice cream. You know, it was a great time and um, went back to his house and I took off and we've been, and he's been really kind to me ever since. I mean, there's never been any more mention of his thinking that I've got my head in the sand or I don't get it or anything. Everything changed for him too. I don't know how, I mean, he still argues the same political arguments, but he doesn't, get in my face if I don't agree with him. Mm. And so I just see it's a great story to me because the power of, um, I think, of doing that. I do that now anywhere I'm going to meet with anybody, you know, whether it's a group of people or one other person. I think about the positive aspects of, of that, of those people and of the situation I'm walking into and what I want to experience that's positive from that time I'm going to spend with those people. That is a fantastic story. I mean, 
if, if you if if you need to sit down and invent a story that shows the power of journaling, I don't think you could have invented as one as effective as that one. <laughs> that that was really good. Thanks. I mean, seriously, because you took a situation where you could easily have fallen into the old trap of you know, okay, well, we're going to get into this argument, and the a- argument happens, and everybody has hard feelings, and oh, I've got the headache, and I can't take this anymore, and you refused that. Before the meeting even happened, you refused it. You sat down with a journal. You wrote down everything you appreciated about the person. You changed your own mindset. And like you said, somehow you also changed the mindset of the other person, which makes sense based on what we know about the law of attraction. But it's always wild when it happens. When it actually happens, you say, wow, it really worked. Yeah. It really worked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it, and it yeah. did. It worked. Like, oh, my goodness. Okay, you got to be convinced. I got to do more journaling. <laughs> <laughs> You know, there's this really powerful um, article I sent to my clients called uh, How Your Sovereignty Affects Others. And by sovereignty, you know, it means your your individual autonomy, you know, how how you being in touch with your own goodness, your, your, your own belief in yourself, your own love for yourself, and your own focus on your own positive aspects of your life, how much that affects other people when you walk into a room. You know, when you... When you walk into the same room that your that your mother is in, and your mother has a tendency to always talk about how the whole world's going to hell in a handbasket, but but you, in your own positive sovereignty, your own autonomy, you walk into that room knowing that you don't think the same way she does. In fact, you think constantly about how things can work out. You know, then Absolutely. you you can affect. You can affect the vibration of your mother. You know, you can affect I've, I've literally had that situation with clients where they were really going through hell with their mother, yeah. and by focusing on their own positive aspects of their own sovereignty, their own love for themselves, they were able to uh, get their mother to back way off of all of her complaining. Cindy Chavez and I did a show earlier this week in which we talked about uh, an article she had found that basically was about giving gifts of energy to people at Christmas instead of material gifts or, or perhaps in addition wow. to material gifts. And the, wow. the form that these gifts of energy took were really fascinating. The first one on the list, I, I can't remember exactly how it was worded, but the gist of it was this. Wish the best possible things for people. Wish that they get their highest wishes. Wish that their joy comes wow. effortlessly. Wish that, they, um, that, that whatever makes them happiest is what happens to them. And, and, and mm-hmm. you know, I can imagine what happens if you start writing that into a journal, because that's that's essentially what you were doing with your with your stepson. I mean, you didn't quite do that because you were really just writing about what you liked about him. But still, that's that's equally powerful. I just wonder what happens with, if you add in things like I wish for the person who I previously expected was going to make my life miserable. I, I wish the highest possible result for that person. I, I wish happiness. Yeah. I wish success for them. I wish joy for them. What happens then? I wonder. Well, you know, Abraham talked about that. They said if if you lay in your bed in the morning and you're and you feel your alignment with your source self and you're reveling in that, you're you're just really feeling how wonderful it feels to feel that you are aligned with who you really are as your infinite self. Let's say you just completed meditation or you're doing meditation and you get to that place where you feel that incredible love inside yourself, that peace, that happiness. And they said if you hold in your gaze at that moment, someone like, you know, your 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 child, your spouse, um, Donald Trump. I mean, you you hold someone in your gaze, you know, say Congress or something. At that moment, they says you will do more to affect transformation in the world than than thousands of people marching for some, you know, to resist some something that they don't want to have happen. You know, their whole vibration is fight, 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 you know, and your, and your vibration is how good you feel. And you're asking that that same wonderful, good feeling be in someone else's life says you do tremendous good in the world. And, And I believe that there is a vibrational thing that goes out like that. You know, you mentioned Donald yeah. Trump, and, and that brought an idea to my mind. Because when Trump first got elected, my wife made a really good observation, which is um, he's the kind of person, well, I think we all realize, he's the kind of person who stirs up uh, controversy as often as possible because that's where he gets his energy from. It's his way of, of mm-hmm. replenishing his own energy. And 
So her observation was, well, if you really want to defeat Donald Trump, what you want to do is get everybody to stop paying attention to him. Don't write about him. Don't have the media <laughs> cover him. Don't, don't have people tweet about him. Don't do any of that. And he'll just collapse within himself, which is probably true. But you just gave yeah. me a further idea about Trump just because of the way you said that. What if instead of getting all upset about Donald Trump, getting all upset about you know what's going on and what he says and the Russia investigation and the email server and all this other stuff, instead of focusing on all that, what if we were to focus instead on Donald Trump peacefully and with, without any intrusion on anybody else's lives, producing the highest positive results that he wants to have? What if, what if we focus on him having good days and wanting, wanting to spread the good with other people, wanting to actually use his bully pulpit, if you will, to put out positive messages, to actually put out positive mm -hmm. tweets and to do it on a regular basis? What would happen, I wonder? Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that you have to agree with mm -hmm. his policies. I'm just saying what would happen? Yeah, I think it's powerful. I mean, how if let's say you had an issue, an issue with your spouse, I mean, and you, you know, you you just wanted to do everything you could to make it peaceful again with your spouse or your or your lover or a friend, you know, that you're having a, an argument with. I mean, if you. If you were to sit with your appreciation journal and write all the things you appreciate about them and then hold them in your gaze at, of, of when you're feeling that positive emotion, when you're feeling really good about them. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's huge, you know. I think the fact I made that choice about my son and, and then I, I had then made that choice about my stepdaughter. I made it about my ex-wife. You know, I basically, I'm choosing that for everybody I, in my world, I want only that they are able to be completely fulfilled as the infinite being that they are, you know. And that's true for every dog, every cat, every bird, every mountain lion. You know, I, every, every creature on this earth I want to see fulfilled and every plant, you know. It's like I know that sounds crazy, but right? I mean, why why would we want it any other way but that everything in, in the world be able to manifest its most wonderful self? You know, it's infinite self, the reason that it was created, you know, that it could live and have that total fulfillment. It also reminds me of some of the stories we've done, um, the shows, I should say, that we've done this week, where we've been talking about surviving the holidays. We did one show about uh, dealing with the stress of the holidays, and another one was about, uh, you know, how, how to deal with uh, troublesome relatives and all that kind of thing. What if mm. we were to use the approach you used with your stepson and with your stepdaughter and so forth, where you journal ahead of time all the things you appreciate about them? What if we did the same thing with Christmas? And, and before Christmas arrived, we actually took out a little journal or even just a piece of paper and just wrote out all of the things that we appreciate about all of the people who are going to come to Christmas in the same house or in the same room or the same place on the same time and basically spend the time together. What if we were to do that? I wonder mm -hmm. how much that might shift so many different people's Christmases. Because so often, I mean, you know how it is with, with Christmases, particularly family Christmases, all the old family issues can come up. And all of them can mm -hmm. manifest and they can turn into the fights and the squabbles and everything else. But if just one person in the family were to journal about all the great things that, that are great about the people who are involved and, and all the wishes of, of you know, the highest wishes of, that, that one could possibly wish for each one of those members... I wonder how much that would shift the energy. I bet it would be a big shift, a shift that was so big that people would be amazed walking away from the Christmas saying, well, that was one of the best Christmases we ever had. <laughs> I agree. I think it's fantastic. And that's what Abraham, you know, even calls segment intending, you know, when you're, when you're, even when you're driving to the family get together that has had a history of, of there being squabbles or something, and you just, as you're driving in the car, you're, you're, you're saying to yourself, you know, what, what is it that I want to feel today at this, at this Christmas get together? What is it that I want to experience? And well, gee, I want to experience great communication with me and my brother-in-law. And I want to experience uh, a lot of love happening, flowing between everybody. I want to, I want to experience that people laugh a lot. People get really happy at this particular Christmas, you know, that there's an unusual amount of love that we're sharing with each other. I want to experience a lot of really great hugs. Uh, <laughs> I want to, I want to feel inside myself a lot of joy and a lot of, um, 
dignity, like human dignity happening to the, you know. So you start naming all that stuff and you walk in the door, you're vibrating with all that, you know. Yeah. And you set it as your intention for the entire three hours you're going to be there. And, you know, then you're looking for it, you're you're noticing it, you're you're vibrating with it. And, yeah, I think you're totally right. It completely affects the entire get-together. It affects the get-together. It affects yourself. It affects, it, it changes the whole dynamic. It's so much different mm-hmm. from walking in fearing what's going to happen. Exactly, exactly. I, I, I see it in relationship because I, I've been going through fear in this new relationship I'm in, you know, fear that, well, if this doesn't work out this way, I'm not going to like that. And if this doesn't work out this way, this could be a problem for me. And, and you know, getting into that place is just, it sabotages the hell out of the relationship. And so, you know, I'm needing to write out the qualities that I want to experience with this woman and and how I realize I've got to dedicate myself to the positive aspects of this relationship and quit giving um, time and belief so strongly to the fact that things could could go wrong or the things I don't like about the relationship, the things that I'm finding to be difficult or I'm imagining in the future are going to be difficult. It's like it's like I literally have to turn around these old habits of going to that place. You know, these are just old habits, I guess. You know, they're they're based on fear. They're based on thinking that we're not going to be secure, that we're going to end up in a bad place. And um, that's why we end up in a bad place, you know, because we feel we fear we're going to. And and then it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. And, and of course, the flip side is that we want to put out the positive energy by focusing on what we want. So, for example, um, just because I want to put out some positive energy to keep building the show up here, um, just Mm -hmm. the last couple days, I think it was two days ago, I received a comment on Reddit.com. Reddit is sort of the up-and-coming social media site. It's it's more like a discussion site. People ask questions, Mm -hmm. other people answer it, that kind of thing. And there there are a few Law of Attraction sections to the site, so I went there and checked it out. And there was one woman who had some issue. I can't even remember what what the issue was, but she had an issue. And so I gave her some advice, and we we corresponded a couple times. And when when, uh, we were done with that correspondence, she wrote back, well, that's really interesting. I said, well, you know, if you're, if you find that interesting, maybe you should check out the podcast that we do. And I told her about it and told her where to find it and so forth. And about a day later, she wrote back saying, wow, that was really good. I mean, it's mm-hmm. like listening to, to close friends talk about the law of attraction. So cool. I can't wait to check out the other podcasts. And I thought, wow. whoa. That's really good. I mean, first of all, if, if you're listening, I think her name is Crystal. Crystal, if you're listening, thank you for writing that. And second of all, I want to put it out there be- about how much I appreciate the fact that she wrote that because I want more and more people to feel good about the show. So here we are. That's my version of audio journaling. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah. Go for it. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So anyway, we got about yeah. uh, seven minutes left. Um, the... Topic has been really well addressed. We've done a great job with it. Is there anything else, though, that we need to know about journaling that we perhaps haven't addressed? Are there aspects of it that we should keep in mind, um, things we should be trying to do when we journal? Because somebody who's starting off, that can be – I know what it's like for me. When I first started a journal, I sat down with a blank piece of paper, and I went blank. I didn't know what to do. I, even though I'd heard, well, you yeah. just do that, I, my mind just went blank. So, you know, what yeah. else can we ha- tell people to help them get over that hump and start, you know, doing it on a regular basis? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know. I've had clients who, who just, they don't know how to write about something like this. They say, what would I write? You know, and I think that it's a it's an art that we develop. It's a skill, a craft to develop, to think of positive aspects. And um, that's why it's probably a good place to start is with, is with something that you really love, like your favorite pet or your favorite musical instrument or I don't know what, you know, something that you love, you know, something that you really love, your favorite hobby, your favorite video game, your favorite television show. Like, what is it that you love? Because then you can, you can see what it's like to write down positive aspects of things, you know, the stuff that you really do appreciate. Um, that's probably the hardest sometimes to write about ourselves, you know, the things that I really appreciate about me. Ho- hopefully for some people that's not hard. Um, I think I think you just have to make it a regular practice for a while and, um, and just do it 
as much as you can from a place of feeling lighthearted about it. Make it make it playful, make it fun. You know, just don't make it a chore like unless I do this, I can't transform my life or you know, this is difficult. I don't know how to write anything positive. And just get lighten up about it if you can. You know, just make it playful, make it fun, or do it just in your head. Think of positive aspects about things. I mean, it's not the same because the writing does make it a lot more. Um, yeah, I think it internalizes it more. Uh, Abraham even talks about the power of writing things out. You know, how much it does uh, lend to transforming us. And the deliciousness is so in the I, details too, isn't it? I mean, it, it, just writing down "I appreciate my son" or "I like the fact that he's happy." It doesn't really get into details much. You, it, getting into the details is how you start to get engaged in it. You know, all the not just all the aspects of the of the son, but uh, you know, you enjoyed the fact that he did A, B, and C, and it led to D, E, and F, and you know, just all the stuff about that person that you can think of to write down every single detail. The details are what make it juicy. The details are what make it interesting. The details are what bring you back. You're right. You're right. And that's, and that's, I think the thing that, that is a skill. That's where the skill gets developed because when I started writing about him, I literally at first thought, well, what, how many things can I write? I mean, maybe five or six things that I think are really yeah. incredible about him <laughs> because I saw a lot of things that he was doing that were sabotaging his life and that were making it difficult for him to have the things he wanted in his life. And so I was critical of those things. And then to just to fo- change my focus entirely to say, okay, what is it I really like about him? And then I did the same thing for my stepdaughter and like I said, for my ex-wife, and then I started thinking of friends that, you know, of course, it's easiest if you start with with a friend who you really have a great opinion of. You know, it's harder when I pick a friend that is um, somebody that I've had disagreements with, with, but that's really fun to do is take somebody that I've had disagreements with and start thinking of all the positive qualities of that person. Uh, I don't I wouldn't say it was totally fun. Those have been the most challenging uh, things for me to write positive aspects about things that I don't really think very highly of. Um, but, but yeah, that's, it's, it's a skill that I think is really, really worth developing. Oh yeah. Well, that's, that's why I advocate the idea of, of telling the details of a story. Like if you were going to tell a story about this person that you're trying to journal about and you were going to just tell it to a friend and think, think about one particular incident with that person that was a positive incident. And how would you explain that incident? Would you just explain it in one sentence? No, you, you'd actually you, you'd go into some detail about it. So write it out like you were going to actually say it to that, you know, say to, to a friend, here's what happened with person X who I'm writing about in my journal. Here, here is a, a, an interesting story that, that had a nice twist to it or that had uh, a you know, positive result or something like that. And just tell the story the way you would say it. That's the best way that I know mm-hmm. to put details into a journal. Okay. Yeah, that's a very that's a really good technique. Yeah, yeah. What, whatever would work for us, so that we're not occupying our mind with the things that we're feeling angst and worry and concern and fear, and that don't make us feel good. You know, right. we've got to no longer give those things as much airtime in our head, and instead give these positive qualities more airtime, and thus we will become more and more a a person who vibrates with the things that we want in our life, and we'll see more of those things showing up in our lives. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. And, in fact, in the process of doing that, we get to know them better. Isn't that the nice part? We get to know the good side of them better because we become less focused on all that other junk that we don't want to focus on anymore. And you can't just get rid of something. Mm-hmm. You have to replace it with something, right? So we're replacing it with what the good stuff yeah. is. That's where the and power I love, is. I, I love it when I walk up to that person or I go see them. You know, I go, I go to their house for dinner or something, and I – I've already thought of all the positive qualities of my friend, you know, and I walk into his house and, and it's like my whole vibration for the, my friend now is, is I don't think any more about the fact that he does this and he does that. And he has this opinion about politics and that opinion about the environment. I, I don't go, I don't go into those places. I go into the things I love about, you know, Absolutely. And to me, that's the relationship I'd rather have. Oh yeah. Unfortunately, we're down to our last 40 seconds, so we got to cut it short here. But before we leave, Tom, if they want some private counseling, some, some private uh, invest, investigation of their own issues, how can they reach you? They could have an hour. Anyone who would like can have an hour-long free discovery session with me by going to my website, yourjoy.com, Y-O-U-A-R-E-J-O-Y.com, 
and there's a form there that you can fill out for a free discovery session with me, 60 minutes. Terrific. Tom, it's been a pleasure as usual. Have a happy Christmas. You too, Walt. Thank you so much. We'll see you all next time here on LOA Today. Goodbye, everybody.